All right, so today on Scroll Sessions, we're here with Corey Stevens, the entrepreneurial force behind the remarkable success of Taft, a brand that's reshaped men's footwear, at least in my personal opinion. <laughs> From humble beginnings to an eight-figure business that garnered national acclaim, Corey's journey is a testament to creativity and resilience. Despite grappling with immense personal and professional challenges, he's consistently pushed boundaries, bringing unique designs and innovative strategies to the forefront of fashion. Welcome to Scroll Sessions, Corey. Thank I'm you, like, man. Good morning. Thank like you. Thank unbelievably you. Unbelievably excited. To oh, have dude, you here. I I never ever come up north this far, so yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a big deal for us to finally meet. Yeah, no, for sure. And I'm uh, so I'm I'm rocking the if I rem if I remember right the calico, calico jack boots. Yes. So these were also the first gift that Scroll ever gave to its employees. Oh. Like we gave Jack boots, like it was, would have been almost five years ago. That boot specifically? That boot specifically. Oh, good, so we good get, taste we, from the, yeah. the chooser. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I have like a couple of pairs. I have the original dragon boots that are still, mm -hmm. still the going OG strong. The OG dragons are nice, yeah. The OG dragons. And like, I've just always been a fan of you, man. Well, so thank this you, man. Is like, yeah. This is honestly an honor. The calicos, I love the calico. And then someone once told me that it looked like a tortilla. Yeah, kind of. And now I can't no, see you anything can't but it. a tortilla. <laughs> well, now, well, now, thank you for ruining that for yeah. me. <laughs> Appreciate that. Yeah, I'm well, glad you like them, though, man. Thanks uh, for wearing them. Thanks for that's a cool gift. That's a very yeah. nice gift. So thank you. Yeah, of course, man. Well, it's no, it's it's literally it's been an honor to follow your journey, and thank you for documenting your journey. I think like that's such a rare. It's I think it's becoming a little more common nowadays. But like yeah. when you started to document, it was just not. Like it wasn't a thing. Yeah, my wife, that was all my wife really. Like she's she's really into kind of digital scrapbooking and just keeping memories. And yeah. she's always wanted the latest iPhone for the storage, basically. I love like that. More storage. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah. she wants it because she photos. takes so many pictures, so many videos. Yeah, so we're, and now you see this kind of like build in public yes, trend. Which is, yes. It's like, well, that's kind of what we were doing. Yeah. Not for the clout on like LinkedIn, but really just for kind of the scrapbooking for our family, really. Which is amazing. And like, yeah. and it seems like your, your wife has really like not only been your, your rock, so to speak, I won't put words in your mouth, but like been a huge driving force with you. Yeah. I mean, she, she your is, and your kids. She, she is the co-founder of Taft. Yeah. And a few years in, we had to kind of make the decision because when we started Taft, we had one little baby. Yeah. And then when we had, you know, two and then three children, uh, we, we had to make the decision like, okay, who's going to really own this and who's going to be the primary parent in the house. Yeah. And so we made the tough decision and she sacrificed to do that. Yeah. And so now, you know, it's really tough because I went on to get a lot of, you know, awards and recognition and I'm here today instead of her for sure when it very well should have been her, no, right. uh, you know, yeah. for the first few years of the business. So I'm so grateful for her because you're right. She is the, she is the rock behind every great entrepreneur yeah. is a, an amazing an even better spouse. And that's very true for me. Yeah. I, I would totally agree. My, my wife is also stay at home mom, but she's also, I've, uh, kind of, I feel like I've injected some of my entrepreneurial, uh, at least blood mm -hmm. <laughs> for the most part into her. And she's like, uh, yeah, I, I feel the same way. She's got her own business and runs her own things, but it takes, uh, a really core strong spouse, yeah. especially with like a bootstrapped, like CEO no or a bootstrap, you know, founder, like it takes really solid support. Yeah. How, how do you feel like your relationship has maybe changed over time? Was it difficult at the beginning? Talk to me about that. I mean, there's a lot of focus on like, you know, bootstrapping or raising money. When you bootstrap, yeah. it means you operate your business in a certain way. Yep. When you bootstrap, it also means you operate your family in a certain way. <laughs> yes. And as much as it affects your business, it also affects your family. Yeah. For us, our, our relationship has always been the most important thing and the strongest thing, to be honest. Yeah. Like whatever Taft's success was, my my marriage's success is much greater than Taft's success. I love so that. So we, we've been fortunate that through the ups and downs, uh, we always stayed true to the fact that that's the most important thing. Yeah. Money will come and go. Business will come and go. Shoes. I mean, shoes, it would come, be and go. <laughs> shoes come and go. And it would be so silly to put something as dumb as shoes ahead of, you know, yeah. important things like my marriage and my parenting so thankfully we've come out of taft in the best you know the best position we could have and our marriage is as strong as ever and i feel like i am a a good dad that's trying to be a great dad you know? yeah that's amazing and now you have the time like you've yeah you've probably i mean it's been, been giving great. back a lot more time yeah right? I'm, I'm like really all of my all of my new year's goals you know today's early early january and all of my new year's goals are really centered around 
parenting. Yeah. <laughs> that's be amazing. Man. A nicer dad, kinder dad, more patient, more kind, you know, like that's, what's important to me right now. I love that. So, uh, and so talk to me about the exit of Taft. I, I think I was really humbled by your, and I think you probably have maybe gotten messages like this humbled and also sad, but also so excited for you too. like probably a mixed bag of all the things Yeah. when you post on LinkedIn and said, you know, I, you know, we've, we've exited, we're, we're, we're done with the, uh, with Brandon, so we're moving on. And, but you had said like, it was time, Yeah. you know, and that like, so like so struck a chord in me, especially cause Shane and I running scroll we've fielded several offers, um, entertained offers for a buyout mm-hmm. in the last probably like six months. And, but your post and <laughs> Shane will probably hate me for this, but your post literally changed my mind and said like, I, I don't feel that way. Mm-hmm. And I want to feel that way yeah. when we exit. Like, I want to feel like, okay, it's t- like, it's yeah. time. I'm done. I'm ready. So uh, talk to me about that. Cause that's a, that's a huge deal uh, to exit a yeah. business. So we sold it in, uh, July, 2022. Yeah. So I had stayed there a little over a year with the new private equity owners, um, kind of helping with the transition, mm-hmm. but also trying to be strategic about it because I realized that I was important to Taft. Yeah. And so I wanted to be able to say, Hey, I'm stepping away. And when people came back, you know, why and what, yeah, well, it's yeah, never yeah, going to yeah. be the same. It's like, well, I already did this for the last oh, yeah. 15 months yeah. and you didn't even notice. Yep. Exactly. And so it's possible. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, my wife and I, we lost our son. Uh, so we have four children, three yep. alive and we lost our son, uh, about a month before we closed on the deal shortly after. And birth. so you can imagine like how done I was with yeah. shoes it, yeah. after that happens, like things like money and it shoes doesn't matter anymore. and business, like who cares? Yeah. yeah. But, um, I think to, to, to kind of relate it to your situation, I think it is really important to feel that way because you don't want to leave wondering like, what if, you know, if you stayed the longer, what would have happened? Did I sell remorse, yeah. too early? Did I sell too late? And, and burnout, you know, I was just like so tired of dealing with the same problems same yeah. questions. It felt like I was on this never wheel. ending loop of the same stuff over and over and over. And little things would irritate me so much. Yeah. And that's when I realized like, okay, when it's this time. is like, when I'm losing my, losing my mind over something as simple as that, yeah, I'm probably a little bit tired of this. Yeah. And so that's what ultimately kind of helped me go down that path because I could have stayed forever. Yeah. But I, I didn't want to do shoes forever. That's, I, I have more important things to do in my opinion. I didn't really, you know, I, not that I'm a victim, but I, I didn't really choose shoes. I didn't yeah. like super proactively intentionally get into that. It kind of just like happened. And yeah, all of a sudden I was in out of socks. Totally. It happened and out and of I socks, never right? intended to do that. Yeah. And so I think that, you know, it was nice to move on because there's more important things in my life than that. And now yeah. I can kind of pursue them. Yeah. And that's amazing. And I think hopefully, you know, e- exits allow founders to, to do that, to have, you know, yeah, more to clarity, do what you want. You know, it's, it's yeah. like, it lets you have a little bit more freedom around yeah. your decision making. For yeah. Sure. So what, like, what's, I mean, we can talk, I, I would love to go back and talk a little bit more about Taft too. Like what, what led you guys to do it in the way you did it? You built, you built publicly. Mm-hmm. I know you had a lot of like early customer experiences that kind of yeah. shaped the brand and shaped the way you went Big to time. market. Yeah. Talk to me just a little bit about that. I mean, so we, so like you, you said, we, we started with no show socks. We yeah. were solving a problem that I was having. I hated when my socks slipped. Yeah. I wanted that in like no show sock look, but I hated like the thin slipping stuff yeah. slipping off. I'd take my shoes off and be kind of embarrassed. I'd like <laughs> soak through them with, yeah, like, yeah, with my sweat feet sweat. Whatever. It was yeah, like yeah. just a bad experience. And yeah. so we went into it solving that problem. And then all of a sudden we were like trying to market socks that you can't see. And so it was like, let's pair them with shoes. So yeah. we were buying up, you know, all these shoes we could find at Nordstrom Rack and all, you know, wherever. Yeah. And then quickly we, people thought we were a shoe company. And so it was like, well, socks Maybe are it's a good ten dollars a pair and yeah, these yeah. shoes could be you know two hundred dollars a pair and so we jumped we we transitioned to shoes and um you jumped right into the premium price point too <laughs> i mean yeah now yeah. they're more expensive than they were because yeah, yeah, yeah. at the time i didn't know anything about 
anything really. Yeah. And so we, we launched and the, the shoes were $189. Yeah. Um, and now they're like 275, 295, 315. Yep. Like they're much mm-hmm. more expensive. Yeah. So I didn't really know, but yeah, we jumped into expensive. I, I thought that we, we had this decision, like we sampled in China. Yeah. And we got the samples and they were fine. And we then we sampled in Spain and we opted to go with obviously producing in Europe because we thought that it's easier to market you, you know, a, a product yeah. made in Spain. Because if I say made it's in unique. Spain, there's these things that you automatically assume about quality, yep. the the factory workplace. And you like, documented this pretty public. Like, I mean, yeah. you, you went to the factories, you like totally. filmed all the process. You were very active in talking about, yeah. hey guys, I'm going to, I'm going to Europe. Dude, at the time it was kind of like a little bit more unique too. Yeah, yeah Like a glimpse totally. behind the curtain. You know, typically the factory isn't shown. I'm showing the people. Yes. I'm introducing you. Yeah. I'm having conversations with them on camera. You're like literally all that seeing their cool. hands and make the shoes yeah, on the it was machines. Awesome, everything. and it was pretty novel. Now it's now those same tactics wouldn't really hit the same way. But at the time, people loved seeing like how their shoes were made. Yeah, at story. that level of quality. Yeah, for sure. No, I, I, I specifically that's why I bought the dragon yeah, yeah, boot yeah. at yeah. the time the that dragon, I bought it. The dragons are. <laughs> particularly nice yeah. yeah so i mean th- that's amazing and and then that catalyst i know you had mentioned on another podcast about your reddit comment mm-hmm. and how that kind of really changed the way you responded to customers and how how did that evolve over time obviously Dude. you didn't market the same when you guys started versus you know before your exit right how did, what evolved and what was the catalyst for that change i think that that reddit experience was i mean that literally changed my life yeah. That's the reason I'm sitting here is that yeah. Reddit experience. Um, I think that in the early days, I looked at who I was competing with and I tried to kind of look like them. We tried to make, you know, Provo, Utah look like New York City. Yeah. We tried to look bigger than we were and we tried to act bigger than we were. And then what really resonated with our customers was the fact that we were small and it was a husband and wife out of an apartment. Yeah. And they cared about each customer and we wrote thank you notes to each order. And like, so rather than trying to be something we weren't, we just leaned into like, Hey, here's who we honestly are. We're not going to hide away. We're not going to kind of hide who we are. We're not going to like try to make you think that we're in New York yeah. city this anymore. Is who we are. Like, let's just be ourselves. Yeah. And that's what resonated, which is like, we are not Nordstrom. We are not <laughs> yeah. Allen Edmonds. Yeah. And that's exactly why people bought from us. Yeah. And then I think you brought, you know, a v- at the time, a very unique design and feel and look, obviously, on yeah. top of everything yeah. that yeah. really helped you guys stand out. I did not. I thought when I started Taft, I thought the business model was the magic. Because at this time, it was like Greats, Jack Irwin, these early, yeah. early yeah, shoe. Yeah, yeah. And Thursday Boots had just done like a Kickstarter campaign. And the the model was the magic. It was like this D to C that cut out the middleman, mm. cut out yeah, the wholesale yeah. margin. Go straight. A, a better shoe for, le, le, you know, you've seen like the the, yeah. oh, the yeah. infographic of like the two yep. bar graphs, you know? Yeah. I thought that was the magic. And then all of a sudden people bought our shoes because of the designs. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it was like, well, crap, I'm not a shoe designer. Yeah. I bet I better figure this like out. I had a out. couple good ideas. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah, have yeah. hundreds of good ideas. Yeah. And so suddenly it was like what I thought was the magic wasn't what was special. It was the actual design. And that's what I ended up doing all the way until I left. Yeah. I never let go Just of that because the design that was the magic. And I felt yeah. like I had a unique, uh, I, I was super tuned into what the customers wanted. And yeah. so I just did that forever. Yeah. That's amazing. How, like what is, what did your ideation process look like? Well, it wasn't, I know you, know, you documented <laughs> some of it, but yeah, but people now people like some brands are like wanting to hire me as a shoe designer. And I'm like, <laughs> That's amazing. look, did I do it technically? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Am I a shoe designer? Absolutely not. Yeah. So for me, it was literally like I would have an idea yeah. and it would be words. It yeah, would be yeah, like yeah. bullet points, not sentences quite, but just bullet points of like ideas. And then I would take those and I, dude, I would try to draw a little bit but I'm not like an artist. I can't like, you know, like I follow a number of great talented shoe designers and yeah. like they're at dinner they're sketchy. and they're like sketching on yeah, the, yeah, on the yeah. table at a nice restaurant. <laughs> I can't even do that. Yeah. Mine would look no better than yours to yeah. be honest. And so it was really more about words and then, and then having, yeah, yeah. And then just working really, really hard on the sourcing because yeah. we weren't reinventing the shoe. Yeah, if you yeah, look yeah. at Taft, it's like cap toe, wingtip, plain toe, derby, like yeah. 
it was just the staples. Yeah. But we put unique materials on those silhouettes. Yeah. And so like the real design is the people that are making the fabrics. Yeah. Not totally. really what I was doing. I was just like puzzle You're piecing, Frankensteining, together. like silhouettes, classic silhouettes with like stuff I sourced from Europe. Yeah. And putting them together. So it was more like honestly words and emails yeah. than it was like me drawing stuff. Sometimes which, it was, but which is cool. Like I mean, it's just a different way of doing it. And like I know you had spoken openly about. I can't remember what the shoe was, but it has the chain. Oh, yeah, it had the, the chain grail, on the, the front, grail. and that was oh, it was the, the grail. grail. That's right. So yeah, you'd spoken about the grail, and it was like a big design oh, dude. risk, obviously, yeah. and it was a risk that more or less didn't necessarily didn't pay work, off. Didn't work out. Right. Right. So, like, compare maybe the risks that don't pay off to the the risks that have. Like, what made you decide to go in that direction? Man, I I think early on there's there's a boot called a Troy boot in ochre. Ochre is like the color of your jacket, yeah, kind of yeah. a little bit lighter. And we we had some friends over, and they had we had the samples in our living room, and a, a handful of friends were like, "I like that one." And so me and my wife thought. This is this is maybe the this one is, we need to lean yeah, into yeah. this one. Yeah. And so we were ordering like a hundred pairs or two hundred pairs, maybe at the time. We decided to order six hundred pairs of that one, <laughs> like real risk. Yeah, yeah. Because we thought this is this it. is going to take off. Yeah. And that also didn't hit. Yeah. And so it was a good lesson to learn because like a few vocal, like the vocal minority, yeah. does not necessarily speak for the people the, that are going to buy majority. your shoes. Yeah, yeah. And we also learned that. It's really easy for someone to give an opinion when you ask for it, but it's very different for them to actually pull out their credit card and spend their money on it. Yes. And so we realized we had to take all the feedback with a big, huge <laughs> lump of salt yeah. and realize that you know founder intuition plus, cu- plus customer feedback plus like industry insights all together can help inform product decisions, but like any one of those individually is not gonna lead to a good thing. And so the yeah. Grail shoe, honestly, that was, I made a sample and I posted on Instagram right before this big award show I was attending. <laughs> and it was like a left or right. Yeah. I had one a grail shoe on one and like a, it was the jack shoe and tux so in which, the other. Which, which, one's which one? And people lost their minds about the grail shoe. And so I was like, all right, this is <laughs> it. This is, is yeah, going to be amazing. This works. This is my customer and feedback. And we actually did it and it didn't hit. Yeah. So I learned some expensive lessons. Yeah. But, you know, the, less, the but that has helped shape the rest totally. of it. The totally. rest of the time from there. I think the consistent thing is that even from the very, very beginning when it was shoes in my living room yeah. all the way to the end, we were always actively seeking feedback from customers in yeah. any setting. Focus groups, Instagram posts, Facebook uh, Facebook private messages. Like We were always looking for feedback, and that is one of the things that made us successful. Sometimes it steered us wrong, Yeah. but for the most part, that's why our product was special. Yeah, and that's I think I mean in the in that podcast you did with Mark and Trevor like that was your number one piece of advice, right? Is listen oh, yeah. listen that's, to customer yeah. feedback, man. I think, I think it's, it's so important. It's and it's, it's interesting to know that like it seems so intuitive like to listen to customer feedback, but like me in the agency world like it's very rare to find somebody who's like actively doing yeah. that. Like we have to suggest all the time, like that that this is part of the process. It's built into our process. It's built in to how we go to market with our customers. And um, but it's so unintuitive to people. Like yeah. like and and granted, our the audience that we work with is a little bit different than e-commerce. We work with some e-commerce mm-hmm. clients. We're getting to that a little bit more, but it's different. But anyways, I how- mean, I dude, I just listened to a, a great short from John Oliver on yeah uh, management consultants. Okay. And I was just thinking, like, it's so insane. Was this one you're talking about, McKinsey? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to, like, say Oh, it, we but, can call out McKinsey. Yes. It's fine. <laughs> it, I just have a few friends that were there. Um, but when he's just destroying McKinsey. But it made me yeah. think, like, it's so insane that we think that outside consultants that have no idea about our product, our audience, our business – we rely on them and we pay them tons of money to, 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 to airdrop into our business and tell us what's wrong. Yeah. It's the customers know more than the consultants. Yes. And if you spend the time, like a great consultant would just talk to all your customers. Yep. And, and so I was just, that video made me think like, oh my gosh, like how insane <laughs> is it that these, we think that these random people that yeah. don't know anything about our industry, our product, our audience, our history, we, we rely on them so trustingly yeah. to tell us what to do when in reality 
our customers have all the answers. Yeah. If you'll find them where they are. And take know? the and take the time to do so. Totally. It's way harder than just like yeah. an individual in your office for six weeks. Yeah. But customers have all the answers. Did you feel like there were times where you were uh, ever relied on consultants at Taft or was it always in, internal? Did you um, always gosh, that's a good question. I feel like I'm I feel like there have been you know, I think there's a couple examples. One is like I get hit up, I'm sure you do too, like mm-hmm industry insights at the yeah. beginning of the season yeah like yeah. trends yep those never ever are real yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> like they're doing research and they're doing some polling to figure yeah. out like hey this is the what's, new hot color coming? yep floral in mint green is like the new hot thing like look at louis vuitton did it in this one dress yeah this is and what's hot next season yeah, like, like yeah. that actually in my in my opinion well i think in fa- and especially in fashion yeah. means nothing yeah. like you you have to lead your you have to lead your customers there and convince them that that's what's next versus like listening to some random person that's you know (laughs) probably trying to get you to buy an expensive survey that they did yeah totally. so that's one and then the other thing is when we started getting closer to acquisition you know we were talking to investment bankers we were talking to you know industry experts and I just found that they were all wrong. <laughs> I, I don't know that that's necessarily yeah, yeah. true, and I don't mean to like question anybody. And I certainly don't want to make yeah. myself look like I am yeah. have all the answers or I'm arrogant at all or overconfident. But I just felt like Taft was so unique. Taft was so special and almost like broke all the trends and broke all the rules, and it was yeah. just its own thing. Yeah. And so a lot of that stuff just didn't apply. Yeah, it was hard to like put it in totally. a box because Taft was that. just weird and different and cool and yeah. very unique. So talk to, talk to us about post acquisition now. So you, you post acquisition, I feel like there's there's definitely probably a sigh of relief. It came at a very, I think, hard right. and interesting time in yeah. your family's life with the loss of your son, and um, I just feel like uh, like just talk us through the emotions of that a little bit because like I, I can imagine exiting probably with a life changing amount of money. I won't ask. What, what it was, but like, I assume it was a significant amount of money that's life changing at the same time, loss of your son. Right. Um, I knew I was going to work there afterward. Yeah. And so I had this experience where for 15 months I was publicly the founder. No one knew about the exit. Yeah. And so publicly everything was the same mm-hmm. internally everything was very very different and where i went from you know having full autonomous decision making power to suddenly having bosses and having kpis yeah. and all these things and in a brand like taft that doesn't really work yeah where i'm so important i'm a critical piece and so publicly no one knew about the acquisition and no one certainly knew about the change in structure and mm-hmm. uh, and ownership And so I was being relied on to publicly go make these videos and talk as the founder, which I will always be the founder, but I will not always be, be the leader there. And so it, you know, you see in acquisition situations where there's like an aqua hire, key people stay on. Yeah. It usually doesn't work out for a long time. Yeah. You know, three months, six months, 12 months, maybe the the culture, the culture shifted. It's tough. And, uh, we were lucky to have something really, really special. Like Taft was magic. Yeah. Taft was was family. We mm-hmm. we loved each other. I had them in my home as often as I could. Yeah. I would be happy to go to lunch with any one individual. Like every single yeah, person yeah. was a rock star. Yeah. And suddenly, you know, that just wasn't the case anymore. Yeah. Um, my, you know, a lot of people got let go. A lot of people left. And all of a sudden I found myself feeling a little bit stuck in a situation where I didn't have the power yet. I was still looked at publicly as the, as the guy yeah, yeah, and yeah. then behind closed doors, I just wasn't the guy anymore. Yeah. And so it was really tough. I think that I've equated it like, you know, to my wife, it's kind of like having a child and then hiring a babysitter and then watching that babysitter parent your child, like in perpetuity. Yeah. It just doesn't work. Like they yeah, don't know no. your baby like you do. Yep. You know all the little tricks and tips and quirks yeah. and 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 things and and so, you know, eventually I, you know, I stuck around as long as I could, but I knew that it was this time. it was the right time. That a lot of things had happened behind closed doors that were unexpected and and weren't, you know, just were so unexpected. Yeah. Uh and to no one's fault. Yeah. But it was time for me to I just again back to just our earlier question. I just felt like 
so over it and yeah. every every day was kind of agonizing i woke yeah. up just dreading work yeah and that's just not a place it's to not, be life no. is way too short yeah life is way too short <laughs> yeah. for that stuff yeah. and you've been you've been so open about like your mental health even before all the acquisition stuff right yeah it's always and been a part of the brand yeah yeah it's always been a, a part in, and tied into the brand you feel like that's you feel like it's benefited I, at least i i feel like it's benefited you feel mm. like it's benefited the brand you feel like it's benefited you i so, mean i we decided early on because we dude we went from like zero followers on instagram to like yeah. three four hundred thousand really fast and so i realized and this is kind of pre all the iOS changes mm -hmm. and like when you could, you yeah. had followers and you could access those followers. Yeah. You didn't have to pay to get in front of them. And so we had hundreds of thousands of people that we could access. And it was like, yeah, let's sell them shoes, but also let's do something way more important. Like let's talk about mental health. Let's talk about, yeah. you know, honestly about life and things. And so we decided that we were going to make content. I mean, I would make videos telling my story yeah. and like, yeah, totally. And it's really odd on a shoe company's page, right? Like, yeah. I don't know of any other shoe company that does mm -hmm. that kind of thing, but that's why people thought Taff was special. Yeah. Um, I think the business benefited. Recently, I heard someone say that uh, shoes have nothing to do with mental health, and I couldn't disagree more. Everything yeah. has something to do with mental health, yeah. and it doesn't matter what product you sell. Like, I could make it about mental health. Yep. Um, so I think the business benefited. I think I've benefited in that there's thousands and thousands of people that hold me accountable. Yeah. You it's know, almost like, like there. It's almost to, like, therapy. it really is. It's very cathartic yeah. and helpful yeah. for me to know that there's people that, that are aware of my situation yeah. and give me grace when I need it. Give yeah. me patience and space when I'm slow to reply to emails, when I'm not picking up calls. Like if people didn't know, they'd jump to judgment. Now yeah. that they do know the whole, my whole circle knows. And so I'm given the, the, the space and the support that I need. And so people people love to say it's so brave, it's so helpful. It's yeah. like, well, it's no more brave and no more helpful to anyone else ex <laughs> th than it is for me. For myself, right? like it yeah. helps me the most. Yeah. And so, it's not completely selfless. It it really yeah. helps me a lot, and it it fortunately benefit the business in some ways too. Well, and yeah, and you've you've been I think more than open on LinkedIn about uh, everything that you've been yeah. through with your, yeah. yourself, with your family, um, going through. And kind of like looking back, what what was the the catalyst for you to start working on your own mental health? Mm. So I know you had like you had your you had the I don't want to say this is the catalyst to start working on mental health, but like you had your viral viral LinkedIn posts, yeah, right, yeah. where you where you talked very openly about your Entrepreneur of the Year award, and then the next day checking mm -hmm. yourself into the the hospital, yeah, right. I mean, I have I remember. Growing up, um, I'd go to therapy and psychiatry appointments at UCLA. That was a, a, a yeah. great, they were kind of, you know, I was like 14, 15, and my mom would drive me there. Um, and so I've been working on it for a long time. Yeah. Unfortunately, not really making any progress. <laughs> and I think that as I've now gotten married, I now have four children, like the stakes are higher. Yes. And if, if, if catastrophe were to happen, it affects more people now than it, than it ever would have before. Yeah. And so I do feel this pressure to like desperately try to make progress somehow. Yeah. And, you know, talking about it is one little thing that I've done. I've explored if there is a treatment for depression, I have tried it. Yeah. You've been um, open about it. even yeah. your ketamine. I've spent treatments, right? Any money I made from Taft, I've <laughs> spent most of it yeah. on, on crazy exploratory yeah. treatments for mental health stuff. Um, and so for me, it's really about, I need to be there for my wife. You know, she has lost a child. Yeah. Um, losing a child and a husband would be devastating. Why would life continue child. after that? Yeah. Yeah. I need to be there for my children because they lost a little brother. Um, so I, I mean, dude, like it's weird because I speak so openly about it Yeah, and I'm like an advocate or whatever you want to yeah, call it. Yeah. Like, I, I don't mean to scoff at that, yeah, but, no, but I, it's I like, I see like over the last few weeks I've seen like mental health advocate advocate. It's like, what does that even mean? Yeah. yeah. Like are, I'm just talking about, it's my, like, my I'm just, and, and the, the weird thing about this is like, you know, like I don't know how to do your job, 
But once you know how to do your job, you could teach it. Yeah. And, you know, like someone that's advocating for cancer, typically they've like beaten it, Mm -hmm. right? Like I am in the middle of this. I am no better or more progressed than any other person I'm trying to help. And so it's kind of weird because I'm like, I am actively struggling and in the trenches with everyone that's resonating with my content. Yeah. So I just want to be really clear that like, yeah. I don't have this figured out. I'm yeah. not, I haven't beaten it. I'm not beyond it. Yeah. I'm, I'm hopefully making a little bit of progress. Um, some days I feel that some days I feel like I'm taking steps backwards. Um, but it's real, but it's, you're, but you're real about it. And I think like, totally. and I think, <clears throat> I mean, I do feel like, even though you maybe don't feel like you're an advocate, I feel like you don't have to beat it to be it, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I'm sure you get told this all the time, but it's like you, the the documentation process and your risk and your uh, your ability to communicate what you're going through, I think will save way more lives I than hope. by you so, not doing it. Yeah, I think know? like my feeble, imperfect attempts to at least try are more helpful than not doing anything. Yeah. But at times I do wonder like, what does this do? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like yeah. I, it, it resonates Yeah, and people are like, thank you, thank you, thank you. But I just can't help but feel like, what does it help for me to tell people that I'm depressed? Yeah. But clearly it helps people, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, that wouldn't really help me, but some people are helped by yeah. me sharing my story and being honest about the fact that, I am, I'm with you. I'm arm in arm yeah. in the fight I'm, I'm in the versus fight some sort of leader trying to pull you up out of it. Cause I'm down there with you, you know? Yeah. And I just, sometimes I feel like kind of imposter syndrome about it because people are like, you know, I've like kind of gained a little bit of following or, or influence in the space, but Purely I'm struggling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and typically you'd think that some super thought leader and super smart guy, a doctor, a therapist. Like I don't have any of the qualifications to talk about it. And yet people turn to me for help. And I'm like, I'm trying to help myself. I don't really know. But at the same time, I am an expert. You know, I have learned, I'm not qualified to give official advice and counsel, but like I know everything about this and I can help. And I try to do that by telling my story. Yeah. Just sharing your personal experiences, man. And I think like, yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's affected me and, I, I don't particularly and I haven't ever struggled with depression, but mental health, you know, definitely runs in my family and I've seen the f- effects of it firsthand. And it's, it's not something that it is a journey of a lifetime. Yeah. It's, yeah. I don't think it's something that is, it's not something that heals like fully, you know, it's just something yeah. that I think like you, you work on and it's something that you take every single day. Yeah. You know? Do you remember the, I don't really see it anymore, but do you remember the game Temple Run? Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. you know how you could like go forever and yeah. one little hiccup and like the, the monster and thing gets you. Over. That's how I feel. Yeah, it's like this is the journey of a lifetime. I am on my temple run, and I if I'm if I miss my workout or I if I don't yeah. go to sleep on time or like one little stumble and I'm consumed, yeah. and so I just feel like it's a, a lifetime of just staying one step ahead of this yeah. darkness. You yeah. know, and it's a long journey. It's Do a marathon. F- is there anything that you're doing? now that you didn't do prior that you feel like is 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 helpful like any any practices that you're putting into place i think that you have it before over the last while i've really 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 focused on sleep yeah um i think that sleep and hormones and nutrition are kind of like the basics of life yeah like we we sleep whenever we want we wake up irregularly we eat whatever is in front of us um our hormones are not checked. You know, they don't get regularly checked on blood work. Like how can we expect our bodies to function well when we're not like I drove a diesel, I drove a diesel vehicle here. Yeah. If I put normal gas in that car, it's not going to work. It wouldn't work. Right. (laughs) Like engine's going to seize. The engine's going (laughs) to seize. Like our bodies have these needs and yet we turn to medications and, all these crazy things. And it's like, well, I'm kind of back to, I've gone all over and I'm kind of back to the basics right now. Focusing on sleep, hormones, diet, exercise, sunlight, um, 
just kind of the more basics of humanity right yeah. now. And I'm trying to really dial those things in. I found out that I have sleep apnea, which I'm really working on treating. Um, so I've tried a lot of things yeah, and I yeah. feel like right now honing in and, and dialing in the basics are going to be kind of like reset your foundation. Like no matter what medication you take, like no pill is going to overcome bad sleep, bad diet, lack of exercise, lack of sunlight, lack of communication and connection with people. So I'm focusing on those things before I start turning to the more creative things. Yeah. No, totally. It just resets your foundation, especially post exit. And hopefully the post, hopefully the post exit, I think it's a, a big weight off of your, I'll, 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 I'm bringing all this stuff up. <laughs> I, thought maybe, it w- I thought <laughs> it would more. I thought it would more, to be honest. I, maybe I think it will that, over the next year. Yeah, like that's ebbing and flowing depending on how I'm doing. But I think yeah. that, you know, people people always say money doesn't buy happiness. And I do, I do agree with that in some ways. Yeah. Um, but money definitely gives you access and the ability to, do really cool things gives you time gives you time it gives you freedom it gives you the ability to like pursue hobbies and interests yeah like i think a lot of the world i mean almost all of the world does what they have to do yeah and i'm fortunate to be in a position where i do what i need to do and it's a subtle difference but in, in my situation especially regarding my kind of suicidal ideation and my mental health struggles um it's a real blessing to be able to I focus have to on have this. Yeah. Yeah. Because I look at my parents, I look at my friends, um, I look at other people that are struggling and they can't really hop off of that treadmill, you know, like yeah. this exit and this departure from Taft has allowed me to like, okay, I, can I need to back. do some things here Yeah, and I'm not bound to this job or this routine or this schedule. I need to do what my body and my mind need right now. And, and so I'm so grateful for for all of it because um i'm learning a lot of things about myself and i'm hopefully on a path to some progress and feeling a little bit better yeah i'm excited for you man i think this this is probably the best thing that ever happened to you (laughs) at least at this point in your life yeah i I think it's yeah i think it's pretty lucky yeah that's awesome what what's on the horizon for you in the next year obviously a lot of r and r a lot of self-work work with family time with your children yeah i mean uh i've tried to take it slow you know i when when news kind of first came out um there was some inbound interest i'm like hey I'm let's sure do this let's do that and yeah. I, I i was like whoa 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 it's like too much i need to i don't even know who i am anymore like i need to yeah, step yeah, back yeah. and kind of figure out what's going on um my wife is 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 working on something pretty cool i'm excited for her um Pro- is she going to get a chance to get back into yeah, it a little so bit she's, now? Yeah, so she's working on protein popsicles. Cool. Um, and she's me times 10. She's yeah, just yeah, incredible. Yeah. And so yeah. I'm so excited for her on that. I'm That's working awesome. on something with with my best friend. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Yeah. So there's this good there's good things happening. Um, but at the root of it is like I'm trying to be a better dad and a better husband and take yeah. care of myself and pursue these. You know, my wife's doing that. I'm doing this yeah. thing I'm excited about. So. I don't know. The future is still unfolding and it's still yeah. progressing and I don't really know what it's going to materialize to, but in the meantime, I'm just focused on trying to get a little bit healthier. I love that. And, and also tackle your flight anxiety too. Uh, <laughs> which is literally the, which is on the, the way ta- here. Yeah. Talk to me about this. Oh my gosh. I mean, even talking about it, my heart. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, man. no, it's all good. It's, it's really good. <laughs> like I listened, I, I, I listened to a, a podcast, like a flight anxiety meditation this morning. Yeah. Um, see, I'm sort of mad because yeah. I'm like, uh. <laughs> but I, uh, on the way here, I kind of like drove by the airport, you know, even just yeah. even driving by, even seeing yeah. the signs is like, it's uh, a little much. Yeah. It's hard for me. So, and it's weird because I've flown all over the world. Yeah. But over the last like five, six years, it's just gotten, like, it's turned difficult. into like, I can't even go to Delta.com. Yeah. But I drove by the airport and I kind of like pretended like, oh, yeah, I'm just on my way to the airport. I'd turn off here and loop around. Yeah. I'd go out west go to the airport um so i'm working on it i booked flights i had a, a bunch of delta credit expiring on new year's eve yeah and you just said document it on instagram yep i made yep. a video uh i have this little account um and i was like forget ten thousand followers i'm just gonna do this i'm gonna send it um so uh on monday in four days <laughs> i fly to phoenix so are you ready <laughs> no no no, no. <laughs> i am very uncomfortable about it but like i just like i really 
Have you watched Chris Hemsworth's um, Limitless on yes, Disney Plus? It's such a good dude. It's that's why I booked it. Yeah, that's yeah, why yeah. I booked it. Yeah. I watched the first episode, in front of your and fears. I'm like, I am doing this. Yeah. Like, it's just I used to be able to fly, and now I can't, and nothing has changed about my body. Yeah, it's like all in my mind. It's just in my mind, and like it's time that I just like take control of something in my life. Yes, so I'm going for it. Good for so, you, man. I'm so nervous. I've tried to be really public about it because I feel like. If no one knew, I probably would not get on that plane. Yeah. But, but now but everyone's like texting me like, hey, I'm in Phoenix. I'm in Phoenix. Come see me or whatever. It's like, it's okay, Monday. now there's a bunch of people. Yeah, on okay, Monday. I'm text you Monday morning. All right. Do it. Yeah. I'm <laughs> hoping like a lot of people are amped and hyped up because I'm uh, I'm really nervous and I think it's going to be uh, really hard to get on that plane. Yeah. But Are you I'm going by it. yourself? Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah, because I feel I just, like you need to do it by yourself. I just need to do this. Yeah. And, I don't want any distraction. I actually yeah. really want to confront it without someone like, Hey, how are you doing? How are you doing? It's like, let me just, let me, own let me just it in my do mind. this. Yeah. I need to battle this on my own. Yeah. Let me, let me do this. So I've decided you, to go by myself. Good. Well, I'm excited for I'm you. I'm so nervous. <laughs> I know. I'm sure you are, <laughs> but I'm excited and excited for what's to come in the new year. Like I think that's what every founder probably wants eventually is, is, that time and now granted you can't not necessarily you're getting more time time's finite yeah. you're just getting back the time that you had devoted otherwise right you know i think that's the one thing that's like money doesn't necessarily buy actual time but it does buy back yeah and it it just it just gives you autonomy to decide how you spend your time yep right like for me like i wake up every day at 5 30 and i go to the gym for longer than most people go to the gym probably yeah and i couldn't do that if I were like working at the post office, yeah, right? like I can't, yeah, you know, I can't take my kids to school if I have to be in Salt Lake at nine a.m. Like, it's just these things that it doesn't buy me more time, it doesn't buy happiness, but it lets me control how I spend my time, and yeah. that's been like a massive blessing for me right now. Oh, well, good. I'm so glad. Do you feel like you're gonna spend any more of that time on your ho- on your house? You've done some. You've done some fun things in the house, haven't you? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two full years of yeah stuff. of renovations. Um, yeah, um, I love working on the hands. I like. I'm a like. I built our scroll sign. I'm actually a finished carpenter. Yeah, I was gonna like, say a guy that wears that school. jacket knows a thing or two around like a tool belt. Um, so so I, I love working on my hands. For but... me, it's gardening. Oh, okay, so garden. I'm, I love I'm gardening not too. super handy. Okay, but man, my yard. I do love. So like my roses, my rose bushes, my peonies, like there are some things I'm obsessed with. So yeah. like spring, I can't wait. That's like, cause amazing. all of a sudden like the world turns on again Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I'm excited for that. Yeah. So when spring rolls around, that's where I'll be. Oh, for I'm sure, stoked for, sure. for you. Well, yeah. I'll definitely text you cause my, my wife and I love our garden as well. I grew up in a family that had a very, large garden i was just mm-hmm. always taught to you know we, we work hard we work with our hands like yeah. that's even though my it's kind of funny i say that because my dad my both my parents are in the medical field which is definitely working with hands too for sure but like way, working though. outside and being getting dirty is like really important yeah um and so we've taken like our own garden space and we have a pretty lucky enough to have a pretty a corner lot and a cul-de-sac which mm-hmm. is nice because you have this big wide open space yeah do you, have is a your yard kind of shaped like that yeah it's like yeah. shaped like that and then we have this big corner in the back and so th- we moved into this house like two years ago it's been so fun building this garden and yeah, the yard awesome. it's awesome like having to do all the spring so like sprinklers myself put in the drip lines myself and see i don't know how to do, do that. yeah <laughs> but i know how to plant fun. seeds but yeah, yeah, yeah someone else did the sprinklers but it, but that stuff's fun and and the planting and watching all of that come to life is uh, so amazing it's amazing it's super cool yeah. especially for like uh, for what is considered like such a little honestly like a little investment in terms of like buying seeds like mm-hmm. or not, it's not that expensive it's like sunlight's it's free nothing. exactly seeds are a couple yeah. bucks and the water yeah you know, find excess water from cooking or whatever. Yeah. Use it, you know? Yeah. So it, it's been so fun. And we do, uh, we do kind of a pizza, uh, we love making homemade pizza. So we do kind of a pizza salsa and salsa garden, but oh. we've mixed in this last year. We did flowers throughout the garden and that was so cool. That just like brought everything else yeah. to life. Well, know? we have, we have a hillside of wildflowers that we're doing and it's amazing. That's awesome. And pizza, it's, give, give me the quick 
30 seconds on like what do you what do you cook on what do you do we do an uni okay we use, a, we use an uni we've done some stuff that's like o- over ac- actual fire but we mm. use the gas one because yeah, it's yeah. just for convenience so sake. much faster yeah. but i love like i love using my traeger we love using the uni but we'll do like my wife's favorite one that she likes to make have you been to setabellos in salt lake oh, dude everyone tells me about that okay. place i've never been because i don't this come like north. Napo- <laughs> no yeah, yeah no, 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 my setabellos style. pizzeria 712 yeah okay i go there all the time but. Or, or pizzeria limone yeah, very yeah. very similar but like they have uh, setabellos has this i think it's called the amelia but it's a it's like a white sauce blackberry basil oh. uh uh, oh, what's the vinaigrette? Yeah, balsamic like a vinaigrette. Yeah, balsamic vinaigrette or like a fig vinaigrette or whatever. And we've recreated that. And she added corn and added a couple cool. other things. And it's so good. Dude, with I like just fresh mozzarella. I just got a Gosney dome. Like oh, Gosney domes. Awesome we can have to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Set up. I gotta use it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You gotta use it. Gotta use it. And then plant. Some get some good tomatoes. Yeah, in the garden. Man, that'd be crazy. Like our fresh basil. Yeah. Would be dream yeah we planted last year we planted roma tomatoes and then um we planted two other kinds of tomatoes that were really that are specific to the napoli region of france of uh, italy and i can't remember probably yeah San yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah that's right San Marzano tomatoes and we made some homemade pizza sauce and nice, all sorts man. of stuff this last year canned a bunch of pizza sauce and so awesome we're excited to use it this year that's cool but yeah, guys, only guys that wear that jacket can can, man. You can't, you can't, you can't wear that it's jacket really if you don't know life. how to it's can. It's really from man. my wife. It's really, really, really from my wife. Well, Corey, like, thank you so much for the conversation today. Like, really appreciate it. Yeah, thank man. you for sharing thank your you. story. It, I, I, I want you to know, at least for myself, it is inspiring. Like, I've been inspired by your story. Um, and not only that, but just like the way you've shared it has been even though you're continuing through the struggle, sharing that has, has been moving to oh, me. Thanks, man. Thank you. So, thank you. Yeah. Um, if people want to connect with you in the future, where should they find you? Uh, well, my LinkedIn is very, very backed up right now. <laughs> like I have thousands <laughs> yeah, of messages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, LinkedIn is great. If you leave a comment or something, I'll definitely see it. Um, and then Instagram, Corey Stevens, Corey with a K, K-O-R-Y. Um, I'm on, I'm on Instagram a lot and on, I won't give out my phone number, but like, yeah, I'm yeah. very accessible. I'm not yeah, hard yeah. to reach. So I'm not yeah. like a famous person or something. I'm like, <laughs> not like a you have my phone number. Yeah, you can yeah. find me. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Well, thank you again for being on today. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. Thank you. Dude, I'm, I'm also a quick, quick plug, man. I'm yeah. pumped. Uh, acquisition offers. Yeah. I know you felt like you're not ready. Yeah. Uh, but that's, we're getting, that we're, means we're good still, things are happening. Yeah, like take means, it as a yes. huge compliment because your industry is hard. Yes. And if that's happening, then things are going well. Yeah. So keep it up, man. That's super Thank exciting. You. I love the podcast. I love all the content I see from you. So congrats and keep Appreciate going. It.